Hello my friends, in today's video we will take a look at Surrey Venus 150mm T2.9 1.6x anamorphic lens. 150mm is another addition in series growing anamorphic lens selection. This one is mainly intended for close-up work, subject separation and anything that requires relatively narrow field of view. This time I have tested it with Panasonic S52X, which will have significant and very positive implications on this review. We will take a look at the performance and the feature set of 150mm Venus to find out whether you should consider getting one. The focal length of this lens is 150mm, but the footage is 1.6x horizontally squeezed. That means that you are getting a horizontal field of view that you would get with about 94mm rectilinear lens. In practical use, it provides slightly narrower field of view than 85mm portrait lenses. It will mostly be used for portrait type filming, for objects in distance and importantly for semi-micro work, we will get to that later. With 1.6x squeeze ratio, you are getting a very pronounced anamorphic effect and aspect ratio of 2.84 to 1. If you shoot open gate 3x2 video, you will get a final aspect ratio of 2.4 to 1, which is possible with Panasonic S52X. 150mm Venus is a hefty lens, there is no way around saying that. Well, it is a long focal length, it has bright aperture and it is anamorphic, so that is hardly a surprise. It is 17.8cm long and it weighs about 1.39kg. Mounted on pretty much any mirrorless camera, it makes the whole combination front heavy and the handheld use is somewhat limited. I've been mostly using it with an ST224 tripod, which can support this type of weight with no issues. The build quality is as good as it gets. The whole construction is metal, there are no plastic parts anywhere. The machining is very precise with great attention to detail. The lens feels extremely solid and very well put together. This lens is not weather sealed, so there is no gasket around the mount. There are no electronic contacts on the mount either, which means that this is a fully manual lens. It uses a normal 82mm filter thread and you can use it with normal filters that you use for your non-anamorphic lenses. Regarding the control elements, there is the focusing ring and aperture ring. The focusing ring is as smooth as it gets. The amount of resistance is perfect for my taste. There is enough resistance to give you precise control over the focusing without introducing too much friction. The focus throw is relatively long at 153 degrees, but you will work with very shallow depth of field at T2.9, so that extra precision will be welcome. The aperture ring is also very smooth with relatively high resistance. The angle of rotation is much lower, so high resistance is suitable. There are no aperture clicks of course, which is an obvious choice for a video or cine lens. This lens is meant for video of course, but I have still done a bit of sharpness testing. I have tested it with a 24 megapixel sensor in Panasonic S52X, which is a relatively easy task for modern full frame lenses. In the center of the frame, the resolution is excellent right from T2.9. The contrast is pretty good, but there is room for improvement. On the other hand, there is pretty much no chromatic aberration. The contrast increases significantly at T4. The image quality at T4 is excellent even by the standards of rectilinear lenses. The contrast at T5.6 is maybe even a little bit better. The image quality stays the same at T8 and therefore excellent. I don't see any diffraction at T11 which still looks perfect. The situation in the corners is very similar. The resolution is very good right from T2.9, but the contrast can be a little bit better. It is significantly better at T4 and there is also visible improvement at T5.6, where we can see outstanding image quality in every way. It stays the same at T8 and T11, which doesn't show any signs of diffraction. Overall, this is optically the best anamorphic lenses that I've tested so far. The only imperfection seems to be slightly lower contrast at T2.9, but that is not much of an issue in video. This lens is definitely good enough at least for 6K. 
With optical performance out of the way, let's talk about anamorphic properties of this lens. At 1.6x ratio, you are getting pretty strong anamorphic effect consisting of the wide aspect ratio, oval bokeh and horizontal flares. The best thing about this lens is in my opinion the bokeh. This lens doesn't have 9 or 11 aperture blades. It has 16 and the bokeh looks accordingly. The transitions are extremely smooth. It can handle even the busiest backgrounds with no harsh outlines. At T2.9 you can get more than enough subject separation at 150mm, especially for filmmaking. You will also get those oval bokeh shapes associated with anamorphic filmmaking. Overall, the bokeh on 150mm Venus is quite special and a huge selling point of this lens. A common weakness of anamorphic lenses is close focus distance. Not with this one though. The minimum focus distance is just 58cm which translates to almost 40% magnification. That is more than enough for flowers and even for details on mechanical wristwatches. The image quality at a minimum focus distance is great as well. This is an excellent semi-macro lens. The price for those excellent semi-macro capabilities seems to be the focus breathing. That is clearly visible, so keep that in mind if you are doing a lot of focus pulling. For me personally, it is worth it for the close-up capabilities, but others may have different priorities. You will also get horizontal lens flares, but much like other Surrey full-frame lenses, it is not extremely prone to flaring. It seems that the flare takes on a blue tint, which I personally like. My experience with this lens was very positively influenced by the fact that I've used it with Panasonic S52X, which has a couple of very useful anamorphic friendly features. First of all, it allows you to shoot open gate 3x26K video, which gives you 2.4 to 1 aspect ratio after de squeezing. This aspect ratio is, in my opinion, more all round usable than 1 to 2.84 that you will get when shooting 16x9. S52X has an anamorphic display mode which gives you a preview of the footage after de-squeezing. There is no 1.6x option though. The closest is 1.5x but that is good enough. Another very important feature is anamorphic mode for in-body image stabilization. To be honest, getting usable handheld shots with this combination is quite tricky. The weight and the balance combined with the fact that it is anamorphic means that it is not ideal for handheld use, but I was able to get some usable handheld clips. Much like with the anamorphic display mode, only 1.5x setting is available. I don't know how much of a difference would 1.6x setting make to be honest. Overall, my experience with anamorphic video on the S52X was in a completely different league in comparison to Sony A7 IV, which has pretty much no anamorphic friendly features. Last but not least, the price of Surrey Venus lenses is still very affordable by anamorphic standards. Here I have to stress that this is not just a toy that you get to experiment with anamorphic video. This is a very relevant filmmaking tool that can be used for very serious commercial stuff. To sum up, Surrey Venus 150mm T2.9 1.6x anamorphic is a pretty special lens. First of all, it is optically very solid. It is probably the sharpest anamorphic lens that I have tested so far. The biggest highlight for me personally is the bokeh which is just beautiful. The build quality is as good as it gets. The same applies to focusing and aperture rings. Both are a joy to use. Another huge strength of 150mm Venus are the semi-macro capabilities which are outstanding not only by anamorphic standards. It seems that the price for that is the focus breathing which is the only downside of this lens. It is relatively large and heavy but that is adequate for what it is. Panasonic S52X is a great match for this lens as I've explained. Overall, I have to say that this lens belongs to my list of special lenses. The footage that I've been getting with this lens is just phenomenal. It is a shame that I don't shoot any narrative stuff. I would be using this lens a lot if I did. Nevertheless, I can very highly recommend it. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you found it to be useful. 
Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down. If you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.